This looks like a great corner where to film. No. 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 Yeah! Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In the course of the last year, I have been literally specializing in duping super duper pooper expensive pieces of furniture for such a tiny budget. We can't what? Exactly what I'm doing. The best part of this channel is that we do every single tutorial with no professional equipment. So no, I'm not asking you to spend ten thousand dollars in equipment to then make a fifty dollar DIY chair. Because in that case, there's no money saving. So you're wondering which dupe am I gonna show you today? I'm literally gonna show you all my favorite DIYs that I did during the course of the year. I'm gonna put them in one compilation to close the year. And yes, we are gonna go through the most famous furniture pieces that there are in the history of design and we're gonna remake them one by one. We're gonna start with a pasha armchair. What we need to start this tutorial is foam. This one is thick 10 centimeters and we're gonna repeatedly use it one on top of the other. Take out your ruler and start marking 66 centimeters long. Two meters, so divided by three is 66.6 .6, and instead the depth is gonna be 75. After that, let's cut it all out. You're gonna have to do two deep cuts in order to cut it in pieces and here you go. Open your windows, wear a mask and let's go with the spraying. You have to do it on both sides that you want to stick on each other and then wait something like 20, 30 seconds. Put something heavy on top and let's pass to the next layer. We're gonna spray again both sides. Let it wait a few seconds. You can use this moment to make exercise for your glutes. Let me show you how it's done. 10 centimeters on each side, we draw the line in diagonal, connect the two parts on the top, and then we cut it all out. Put your elbow in the middle, I would say, and then use it to shape it like this. Take out your precision knife once again and cut out all the parts that are external to your circle. So keep the same height as the back of your chair, 75. Glue them all together like we always do. So let's do the same process again. And here we go. We have two diagonals. As you can see, they match. This is freaking awesome. Use the elbow hack once again. We draw our circle, cut it all out, and now finally the two pieces are connected so we can go and invest our time in shaping it perfectly. And don't forget that in the middle, there's an indentation that goes inside. It's gonna make the shape more similar. We are basically gonna draw the fabric directly on top of the couch. So we just place it backwards on the couch, and then you try to cut out the extra material only after pinning one side to the other. You are just gonna be pinning them and drawing it on the couch itself. Pinned it all around again, and finally I have the drawing to follow. Remember that on the side we need a diagonal, so I cut it that one more diagonally. Trace it on the foam, and we're gonna have two identical pieces. Only after that you have both of them pretty similar or identical, you put them together, stitch one on the other, and then put it again back on your chair. We go and sew it, we have now the bottom of the seating, and we're gonna do the same identical thing also for the back of the chair. Go ahead, pin it all around, then you pin it all, and you go and sew it, and finally, we just need to make the connection. Then flip it all around, sweep it inside out, and you just go and put the dress on your couch. Oh yeah! Those little corners are basically the protagonist of this entire couch. We're gonna take now a metallic thread cable, I don't know the word right now, anyway, and pass it through the couch from one side to the other. Then we're gonna fold and make a little hook with our metal thread and cut away the needle and make a knot on that metal thread so that then we can pull it from the back of the couch and it's gonna catch all the material inside and pull it inside the indentation that we cut out before. We do also with the second part, so with the right side, put it inside, make a little stitch on the fabric and pull it from the back. You see how it catches it? It's so cool! On the other side, we're now have to, gonna have to put two buttons. These buttons are gonna be pulled as strong as possible and are gonna secure our fabric in shape. Find the middle of your square, then tie a marker, to a thread and use the center to make the entire circle. Cut out all the extra edges. I decided to divide the work in two 
sections because it made me feel more secure so first I stapled inside all the foam and only after I went and stapled inside all the material and secured it as round and with less folds as possible and arrived then to the corner that is the trickiest part as you can see here the fabric stayed open the reason is that this one is the back material that instead of being sewn will be stuck to the bottom of the couch so you see these are the diagonals that you have to create so staple with strength pulling the back towards the middle and that's gonna keep your couch safe and secured last little step and we're done you have to send away the corners of the circle of the leg that we did before and then go and add four holes and now start spray painting it in the color that you prefer it can be black it can be gold you can choose your own the original one has both the versions and then put it on top of your couch. Screw inside four of your screws that are gonna catch the wood that we had before stapled to the fabric and that's why it stays all in shape. we're gonna make together is the pond mirror this piece has gone completely viral on Pinterest Instagram everywhere but it cost something like four hundred dollars I'm gonna show you how to remake it with an Ikea hack so buying an Ikea mirror but you can do it with any mirror that you have at home and the equipment is a total of like ten dollars four hundred dollars mirror for ten dollars I got my glass cutters a while ago when I was doing these tables over here but you can order them online they're extremely cheap and they come in two different ways this one that is literally like a pen and you can go free-handed on your cutting and this one that instead works like when you were at school making all circles just placing this on the glass or on the mirror and then making the shape i'm putting you here the measurements on the top left and you can totally take out your ruler and follow them and make it exactly as original i thought it wouldn't be such a difference even if it just went free-handed it would look pretty you cannot cut all the curves at one shot you have to make a lot of little arches and break them one at a time so you see here i'm following one curve only then it putting the mirror more external compared to the table and just starting to smash it from the bottom automatically it's gonna trick make a line and you can crack it off. I did not understand why the mirror was not falling off, usually it just falls on the floor. And that's when you realize that Ikea has a sticker on the back of your mirror and that's why it was not falling apart. We're gonna take this off, take the sticker off, and then continue. Normally there is no sticker on the back of your mirror, but if you're following the same tutorial with the same Ikea mirror, you're gonna have to take your sticker off. Now take out your patience because we're gonna repeat the same movement a lot of times. We make one arch only, put it outside from the table, press it from the bottom so the gravity, oops, oops. Now continue with the same technique, make little arches, pull them out. You're gonna do this also on little arches because it becomes smaller and smaller, the areas that you want to break off. And every time it becomes harder because when there's less weight on the part that you're breaking, it's harder to take it off. And sometimes it's internal curves. That means an arch pointing towards the inside and on those ones you have to be very careful not to break the entire mirror off. We are not doing this in random spots. We are following the lines that we have already drawn with the glass cutter, but there where the edges were too tiny to break off the glass with gravity, we're gonna have to break it by hand. And now we just simply go and sand every corner. Clean up your mirror and the blue marks of your marker. is so famous that even if you know nothing about design and you do not know its name you for sure have seen this all over movies and stars apartments or somewhere it's the eames chair and it came out completely perfect and super comfortable let's go see how i did that the information online about this chair is extremely minimal and i guess they did the best thing because there's people like me popping them but this is what i figured out 106 for the base First step is cutting out a bunch of wood for the bottom, for the leg, for the neck, and also for the feet rest. And finally, I was ready to cut out all the shapes in this curvy way so that I could attempt it on the original piece. I know, I know, I know, the lines are not perfectly straight and I could have used a ruler and I could have done a lot of things. But bottom line, it worked anyway. Look at this, look at this! 
very gently, very gently. We don't want to break it. We do not want to break it. In case it's not curving enough, what you are going to do is dip it a little bit in water so that it's going to be more moisturized and it's going to make it even more bendy. Honest, and in my case, the wood was perfectly super bendy as it was, but I decided that it was better to show you what to do in case yours doesn't bend. Wow. Such a difference. What we are doing here is filling every single hole with tons, tons, tons of glue and then finally curving the wood to leave it to dry in the exact position that you want it to dry. So basically the end position where the pillow is gonna perfectly fit inside. <laughs> Once you got the measurements more or less figured out, it's time to tie a knot and leave it to dry. Before we go further with this video, it is important to give a second of thank you to all my Patreon subscribers because I love you guys. You can subscribe as well to my Patreon account. It means that you're supporting this channel. I will leave your name inside every single creation that I built so that I can carry you with me forever. So let's go thank them. This is the back. It will need to go connected over here. This is still a little bit flexible. So now we're gonna have to create a connection and this is the back of the, let's go, let's go diagonal. Let's go diagonal. Look at this. Instructions for this foamy thingy as are always the same. Spray the bottom, spray the top, let it rest for like 10 seconds and then put something very heavy on top. We all know that this lazy human being doesn't like to take measurements so my solution was to directly measure the dimension of the wood. So to know where to cut, we are simply gonna follow the shape of the wood itself. You gotta cut, 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 and cut, 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 and cut, and cut, and cut. We're gonna make it as smooth as possible. Now we flip this perfection upside down, and yes, this is the curvy part that goes in this direction on the chair, but we don't want it so boxy and square also on the top, so I'm just gonna gently round all the edges without any precise shape. I just don't wanna see this angle over here. And again, we're cutting again. That's just cutting all the curves. I looked at it, I looked at it, I looked at it, and at the end, I decided that 15 centimeter is way too much. It's gonna make it too thick, and the back is not gonna attach, so what I decided is to <laughs> take this off. I'm literally repeating the same process, smoothing the top again, because I took out the purple foam, so I need to do, again, all the curves more soft, and I'm gonna do this for everything, also for the neck rest and the feet. We're passing now to a lot of stapling that is basically the core tutorial of every single video that I make because we do not like to sew so we're just stapling the first the foam and then the fabric on top. So what we're doing is adding a little box inside the fabric so that we can staple it on top of it without seeing it on the external cage. So we can staple it here and it's obviously smaller than the pillow because we want to make sure that we do not peel it from the sides, you see that there's extras everywhere. Plus, we stabbed our couch before, see here? Cause we're gonna make this also on the wood so that we can pull the bottoms and create the Chesterfield effect. Watch. Right, here it is. We don't wanna pull it completely, we still have it on the other side. Get the bottom. We pull from the other side. You see it? It's going inside. So we just flipped it back upside down. These are the bottoms that are on the back to keep it stable. This is the front. We are gonna pull the fabric as tight as possible. And then we just staple it. Back with a hardcore staple season. First pillow is done and it's literally perfect. We're gonna do exactly the same thing on even the other ones, but that's a bit boring, so boom! So we made all of them for the top, the bottom, the back, and the feet stand. And now we need to do the arms. So this ones instead are gonna be stapled directly, fabric on top of it, without any box as we said, so that's exactly what we are gonna do. So as you can see, that final part, I'm bending it, putting it inside so it stays clean and stable. It is time to connect the pieces of wood together and this one is the back and it goes connected over here. On the original one, there is two points of connection. Basically one is here in between this 
diagonal piece and this one like this and a second one goes in diagonal here so we're gonna create both of them on both sides they do it in metal we do not know how to weld metal blah, 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 blah. do it in wood is that this is not like this. It goes a little bit tilted like this. I could just fake that I didn't notice it and put sticks to hold it. I wanna make it good. <clears throat> I wish I had a way to describe this angle, but I have no idea how I calculated this. So the only thing I can do is leave you the final drawing after I'm done with this. pieces together because it's completely ready we need to assemble it but we need to talk about the elephant in the room and that is the leg I did not make this there's no way I can make this I paid this like $70 so that was the most expensive part so we spent like 150 let's go build it now so here we go and I have to say that I'm so happy that I made you guys both because this conference is so cool so what are we doing we're just placing the pillows inside and because there's a piece of wood inside the pillow itself, we can screw it from the bottom. So first we put the pillow. Yes, I down. Try to center it. It's awesome. Don't think I've never been so happy in my life. This is so cool. And now we literally just get screws and go inside a bit randomly. Just catch the box from the inside. honest with you the only reason that people take that things are hard is because they want you to spend your money because reality said it's simple it was so easy so easy and you should do this okay first thing we're gonna do is actually stick a few pieces of paper together so to create the stencil with which we are gonna copy the table it's composed by two legs that are identical just one turned switched round it on top of the other one so i will put you the right dimensions of the table over here but i am gonna make it a little bit smaller basically if the top of the table is 40 centimeters and one centimeter is my glass i'm gonna do it 39 centimeters high on one side i am gonna mark 39 and on the opposite direction only half of the height because two legs that are gonna cross at that point 14.5 and by hand you draw all the curves of the original leg let's go and cut it all away and use it as a stencil on our piece of wood it's basically just drawing over the drawing that you have done already we just trace the lines that we did before as i told you place the straight lines on the straightness of the wood and then you cut everything away you're gonna do this two times so to have two identical pieces like this you apply the short piece on top of the other short piece and this becomes the opposite leg and we are gonna make sure that the top leg can move back and forth so to place it wherever we want compared to the glass. But first, we sand it. Mm. 
You can totally decide the color that you want for your legs. The original one actually comes darker and lighter, so both the options are fine. I decided to make mine darker, so what you do is get a stainer and just pass it all over the wood, top and bottom, better if it's two layers, and then go and make the two holes on the short part of the leg to cross them together. And by this weird little thingy, they're basically the wooden rounded mini dowels that usually you find like in Ikea furniture when you want to build it and we're going to use them to connect the two pieces of wood. Guess what? It works! It works amazingly. You can regulate this as you want. You can decide to just leave it as it is and it holds perfectly or you can decide that after that you finish with the glass and everything and you find the perfect dimension or position that you want to leave your legs at you can add a little bit of wood glue inside and it's gonna stay whatever okay so first thing that we do is place our legs on top of the glass in this way we're gonna be able to draw some guidelines and understand how big and where and what we want to do with the shape of the glass and we're gonna go and mark yeah we're better more or less the shape of this weird triangle so that we are sure that it's going to stay outside of the legs. I added a little bit of glue in between the two legs. I placed the glass on top of it and the table is done. Now, let's go and see the result. not the most complicated and even though I created this huge things that stays the most comfortable piece I have ever made and that's why it made my super top list not top 10 but top one he's just the number one I'm talking about the Togo couch I made one single piece but you can recreate it many times in order to have a huge sofa I'm gonna show you the tutorial right now but before I show you that do not forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet because there is a beautiful year ahead of us and I'm sure we're gonna make so many incredible tutorials. Leave me your tips with what you would like me to try next because I basically follow all your suggestions. What we need for this tutorial is foam, two meters, then one meter and thickness, 10 centimeters. Then you're gonna need the material that you most prefer. I chose Alcantara that also has like a double layering inside that is gonna make it super resistant and then some extra foaming to make the material super soft. Extra things are very simple equipment and that is paper, tape, a marker, a precision knife, a meter, and some spray glue. It's important that it's spray glue for foam. It's important that it resists. At the end, we're gonna take a sewing machine and also two meters of a zipper, buttons that I have already covered in the same material, and a very long needle. As a start, we're gonna have to cut the foam in three. This means 66 times six centimeters, and you just mark the line and trace it. Then you're gonna go with your precision knife and cut it out. It's gonna be exactly three identical shapes. Also, the depth of the couch is 80 and not one meter, and that's why we're gonna have to go and cut away 20 centimeters, so to make 80 centimeters depth. Shake, 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 gotta shake, shake, shake. Shake your spray glue, shake your spray glue. Do it on both sides of the foam. Time to go ahead and do it on the third layer of the foam. Spray both sides, wait for it to dry a few seconds and then place one on top of the other and put something heavy on top. Now that we did the base, it's time to work on the back of the couch and we're gonna do it with the second piece of foam. This time we're not gonna cut them equally. We have to do 70. 70 and one of 60. There you go, DIY Army, you know the drill. Just mark the centimeters that you need, draw a line to connect them and cut it out with your precision knife. Do it three times. Time for some spraying, you do it on both sides, wait a few seconds, place one on top of the other, you let it dry. Yep, 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 I see it. This piece is smaller than the other ones, but don't worry, it's done on purpose and I'm gonna explain you everything very soon. 
Now, once you have the base and the back of the couch, just connect them one on top of the other, put something heavy on top. I have a degree in creating disasters and I didn't want to make one, so I created this technique where I would draw the stencil on all the papers, stick them together and then draw the exact picture I want and then you can cut it out so that it would have identical on the right and on the left. You simply have to trace the lines that you have already cut out on one side, then we deattach it from one side, stick it on the opposite side, flipping it around, and then stick it again and trace it again. At this point, it's gonna be super easy to cut it out. Important step is also to connect the lines that are on top of the foam so that they both would touch each other. And then cut out everything. This is the biggest satisfaction ever to see the shape coming out in the drawing. It took like forever while doing it, but such a cool fast forward and I just see it appearing in front of my eyes. And now we're gonna cut them in slices of 10 centimeters and then diagonally. So that they're gonna become little V's that we are gonna put on the corners so to make this extra volumes on the side. Very simple, draw lines of 10 centimeters and then you cut it diagonally so that you have two identical parts that you're gonna use both of them on the couch. Spray, wait a few seconds, and you go and stick it on top. You have to follow the shape that is now round of the couch, and so push it really well down with the fingers, and then you go and do exactly the same thing also on the other side. Here I had some extra material, you just cut it out and it becomes perfect. This is amazing, I am so thrilled. And now all we have to do is make the dress for the couch. The original design has two main sewings, one on the top of the couch and one on the front. So here you see me placing the end of the material exactly where I want the sewing to appear. And then I'm gonna start folding the material so to create six folds on the front of the couch that are gonna become the shape. I do it on one side and then I go in the opposite direction just to make sure that the shape is gonna stay and that I will go and cut out the right amount of fabric. After all my genius calculations, it came out that I had to do 12 lines of 15 centimeters. I was absolutely shocked that it came out such a round number, but yeah, I'll call it the luck of the beginner. You go ahead and connect all the lines. So basically what we're doing now is put the pins on the line that we have drawn previously and then you're gonna have to sew half centimeter on top and half centimeter under the line so that you will have a double line guys let's get this clear i'm a terrible seamstress i can make you any calculation you want but i cannot go straight and if this couch turned out nice with me doing it you can definitely do a good job yep you can see all the lines both for the front and the back we're now gonna place it directly on the couch connect the lines together and make the shape out of it Let's get this pretty couch dressed up. We have a super important sewing on the front that was a little bit higher. So you're gonna see me now pulling up the material after that I connected it exactly at the height where I wanted it. Once I reach that angle, I finally go and connect the sewing of the lines of the top with the sewing of the line of the bottom. This is very important so that it's gonna look like a continuous line. Then I press the fabric together and once I reach the shape that I need on the couch, I go and pin them together. I'm gonna go do this all around the couch and even on the back. You're gonna have a lot of extra material falling on the front and we want it cause that's the folds. And yeah guys, that's exactly how it goes. On the other side, you do not close the material. Otherwise, how do you take the couch out of it? So you go and place line on line and then you put a pin on the top and a pin on the bottom where you want them to connect without closing the material. So now you can undress the couch and go sew it. You are gonna end up with a sort of rectangle. So all you have to do now is sew those four straight lines and you're done with this part of the couch. Before taking it off, I did this picture over here to remind myself how many lines are visible and how many are gonna be under the couch. So that I could draw the square where we are gonna cut it completely out and add the zipper so to put it in and out the couch every time. Yes, it means your couch is washable. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's not so visible, but there is a blue line drawing a square over here. Can you follow it? 
go ahead now and cut out three of the four lines not all of four of them because one is going to become where the fabric is together and only on the rest of the material we are going to go and clip the zip first of all one pin on the bottom where we are going to pass with the sewing machine so that it doesn't open completely and then just pin it around on both sides of the material so that you can open it and close it anytime very delicately go and insert all the couch cover on top of your foam and push it all the way in it's important that you know that the corners of this couch have to be flipping outside so pull out completely the material so that it makes four little ears then zip the bottom recreate all the poles that we had pre-made and the couch is gonna appear in front of you only little step missing is adding buttons no these buttons do not have any use of opening and closing the couch they're just gonna be useful to keep all your folds in shape doesn't matter how many times you're gonna throw yourself on the couch it's gonna stay in perfect shape so put the needle inside one of the folds and come out from the other side of the couch three on the back and three on the bottom Ah, yeah you have to put another button also on the top so to hold the button in shape now what we're gonna tackle next is literally one of my favorite pieces of design since I was probably 16. It's a Raleigh Poly chair and I have done the biggest mistake of my life gifting it to a friend because I love that chair so much and I really want it back. So I'm gonna show you how to make it and probably I'm gonna follow my own tutorial and do it again because I really want it in my studio. Here you can see all the equipment that we need, but you're also gonna have it in the description box so that you can understand the sizes, the measurements, how much material. Plus, this super secret material that is gonna make our dream chair come true. Here we go. Step number one is place the ball on top and start following the same roundness of the ball to make the shape on the first pipe. We're gonna do one pipe, and then to do the second one identical, we just start twirling the pipe so that you can copy it on the other side and there you go two identical legs for the back one instead i had to place a ball on the table because i couldn't stand up for such a drastic curve and then you do the same thing to follow on the other leg you can totally do this process also with a handsaw it's gonna take you like 40 minutes but it obviously takes like two three minutes if you use the jigsaw way much time savior you do it on all four of the legs and you're done yeah! And it works perfectly, perfectly. Okay, we got it. Now, the height of the back is 64. So we're just gonna mark on the top here to where you want to arrive. So also here, we are just gonna draw the shape around it. All you have to do now is create the external shape that is gonna be created on top of our structure. And that's our secret ingredient. There we go. First step is put two gloves. Not two gloves in total, two gloves for each hand because it's gonna burn so much if you don't. Then you start shaking the polyester, that's what we bought. You could do it with resin, but this is way cheaper and that's why I picked it. And you do for every 100 grams of polyester, two grams of hardener. You mix it up and you start using it. Second piece is the fiberglass. It's this sort of paper that you rip with your hands and then you start wetting them with the liquid. Starting from the top, put your first layer of fiberglass and then put on top all the liquid so that it becomes solid. Okay, I decided that my plan is to take all the fiberglass out from the ball so that it becomes smaller and easier to work with then place it on top of the legs and then i'm gonna go and add all the layers that i wanted to do exactly on the shape when it's already with the legs itself this part went way easier than i thought i just took out the air from the ball and ta -da, it popped out so easily i thought i would have to like break the ball and sand it off instead da -da 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 -da. it's so easy it went perfectly now we're gonna just add some silicone on the legs and place the ball exactly where it was before go downstairs torment your lovely neighbor and ask him for some help to place it on top 
This is literally the best life hack ever. You just dip your finger in the dish soap and then the silicone doesn't stick to your finger. You can smooth it out as much as you need. Once I was done with this, I realized that the chair was taller than I wanted. I really don't know how, it just grew. And the 64 centimeter of the back were actually way lower than where I drew them. So I made a new drawing with a pen and then started to place the new layer, the resistant one, so the second and the third layer only up to the new line that I drew so that after you can go and cut. So you see, I'm placing it only up to the line or better, the fiberglass goes on top, but the liquid that makes it solid, it's only up to the line. It's gonna make it much easier to cut it out later. Once you did this step two, actually three times, I pass also to the legs. I'm gonna cut here the fiberglass in really tiny pieces, otherwise it's difficult to follow this curve and then spread all over it the liquid and it's gonna become super stable. You do this three layers, maybe even four if you wanna feel more safe. And here we go, it's super resistant, it's super resistant. So the genius lady in the store gave me these things that are like carbon threads. It's supposed to make it 20 million times stronger and we're gonna use it just as a few X's on the center of the chair and as a connection over here. We are finally at the end of this mission. The chair looks already so cool, like I can't wait to sit on it. All there's left to do is go and trim out all the parts that are outside the marker that we drew before and then sand it a little bit and then paint it. Biggest mistake that I did in this DIY was underestimating the fiberglass. Guys, even where I pass only one layer, it was super hard to cut it out. So be careful not to pass extra layers in the section that you do not want to be on the chair, otherwise it's gonna take you forever to take it out. Now, if I did a good job in making it smooth and nice, you can do this just by hand. But if you're a disaster, as I am, you're gonna have to buy a sander in order to make this smooth. only time that I'm not gonna destroy the name of a piece of furniture because it's in Italian. Yeah, I'm an Italian interior designer in Tel Aviv. I forgot to tell you that. Anyway, what I'm talking about is the Tavolo Morbido from Studio Mignone. It's a mixture between glass and marble and I'm literally gonna make this for pennies. It costs over $4,000 but we're gonna make it with salad containers. I bought this in what you would call your Dollar Tree but basically in any place where you can buy extremely cheap stuff, this was like $1 each. You want them to end up being more of something like a cube, so they have to be the same size. And now we're gonna fill them up to make sure that they don't break. One on top of the other. Okay, I should have definitely waited a bit longer because when I cut this out, it was still soft inside, so I had to wait. This step can be done with anything sticky. I'm using here super glue, but also silicone would have been okay. You just want the two containers to be stuck one on top of the other. I'm also placing some tape to hold it in place so that I'm sure that while it dries it doesn't move. Mix together some joint compound and also a fair amount of water. You want this to be not too liquidy and not too solid. Okay guys we're almost there. We created this smushy texture over here and we're literally just gonna go and throw it on top of our boxes and try to make it as flat as possible. Before we go and splash our compound on the box, what I suggest you to do is to get some sandpaper. Scrub, 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 scrub. You are gonna make this as rough as possible so that the joint compound is gonna stick to it instead of sliding off and this is a very important step. Put your gloves on. This process is just splashing your joint compound all over your structure. You don't have to be exactly precise while you're doing this. You just need to cover all of it and give it some thickness. If it's too thin, it's gonna break out very easily. Now, why did I use a paper under it? It's exactly for this reason. Because at a certain moment, after you let it dry for like five, six hours, you're gonna have to do all to the bottom. Yes, even if you don't see it, we want to make this perfect. So we're doing all to the bottom and the paper let me spin it around without breaking it or nothing like that. And we're gonna make it with aluminum paper. But it is important to keep in mind that the side of the glass that we're gonna put on top is not like an angle. It's not like a sharp angle. We want it to be curved because all this table is very soft. Tavolo morbido. With this set, I created this little shape that simply got one of the extra jars that I got, put it on top of the paper and traced it. 
so that now we have the perfect corner that we want to follow on top of that. First step is to cut out our guide and this way we can place it on top of our structure and know where to go. Here I'm just placing a little bit of the joint compound on the side just to use it like a sort of glue and then finally you see me placing first our guide and then the little piece of aluminium paper on the side. I'm gonna wrap all the texture around this so that you don't see it and after that I made all the structure around it I am actually going to use something flat to make sure that now finally instead of having round edges it is going to become more flat. I didn't do this from the beginning because it was so much texture we needed to add it, it would be useless so just now we made it squared and straight and then sand it for the last time. It is springtime. Oh, this thing is so cute. And I was literally missing a coffee table for my studio. It's perfect. It's so big. It's so scenographic. It's the first thing that you see when you come in the office. And this is a big thing. Because if you don't see my DIY AMS chair and you see this before, it means it's pretty cool. I'm telling you. Yes, I did sand this perfectly. I admit it. I could sand it even a bit more. But I got bored in the meantime. You can do a better job than me. I believe in you. Next on our list first couch I had ever made in my life. I had no idea what I was doing while attempting this, but it turned out so awesome that that's where I started doing all this DIYs and furniture from. It's the Camaleonda couch from Mario Bellini. It's a historical piece of art. And it doesn't even matter the fact that it's completely unaffordable. It's the fact that it's basically sold out anywhere. You just cannot get this piece of furniture. You cannot have this couch unless you make it yourself. What do you need is foam. We have to reach 30 centimeter, but that's too expensive, so three times 10 centimeters height is gonna be the solution. More foam, really tiny and thin, but it's just gonna be added on top to make the shape more rounded. Then the fabric, you can choose any color fabric material that you wish, this doesn't matter, and the wood. I have three pieces because I composed three pieces of the couch. Other funky element that you need is this hooks and holes, but don't worry, I'm gonna list everything in the link down below. Now, let's start. If you know me, you you know that I love to do make tutorials with absolutely no equipment. That's why I use this trick to sign the dimension of our couch. The size that you need is 90 times 90 and that's why I signed 30, 30, 30 centimeters and then on every single corner and then drag the line. And this way we're gonna have the size of a couch and also we are gonna have written down the spot where the lines cross. We need it later. Now do this three times because I told you we need 30 centimeters of height. Three times. And then go ahead and connect all the pieces of the foam together. Wait 20, 30 seconds, and then put the two pieces one on top of each other. Then put something heavy on top. Lift your pretty bottom from the foam and now spray it again because you need the third layer stick on top. Wait always 20, 30 seconds, apply it on top, and there we go. Now we want to draw the length of the line all the way because we are gonna need this later to pass the fabric inside. Uh, you want the corners to be not so squared as you see them, so my suggestion is to go inside with your precision knife and start making it rounder. Also, the lines that we drew before, because we are gonna need to stick the foam inside the foam, the material, you're gonna have to make cuts on all four the sides. Trrr, magic on every single side. And that's where our initial lines become really handy. We need to make holes on the top of the couch because it has this sort of Chesterfield, Chesterfield shape. This is where we're gonna have to press the buttons inside. So go where the X crosses on top of the couch and start digging inside. You want to reach something like five, six centimeters of depth. Now take up the wood, my friend, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Press your ruler, make 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 on every single corner. Then you're gonna drag your line, and we're gonna have, again, the lines and the X where we want the middle of it. Now we're gonna have to start drilling on those X's. Why? This is where we are gonna pass the thread to catch it from the other side, the bottoms on the top of the couch. Time to stick the wood to the foam and second round in I learned that like every single spray it's way better if you keep the material vertical and not down. Basically every base of the couch needs 2 meters times 2 meters and that's why we'll have to add 2 pieces together. So the length just make 2 meters and that's easy. For the height we're gonna have to do 150 and add those famous 50 centimeters on top of that. Always place the pretty part of the material on the pretty part and then start pinning it together. This because after you're gonna 
take it inside out and the sewings are gonna be in the inside you go ahead with your sewing machine tra, 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 all the way to the top super long and we're done luckily the internal foam has a height of two meters so this one is gonna be get rid of those scissors it's easier with your hands two meters time two meters just rip it off now guys i will be honest with you this works only the first two times let's call it the luck of the beginner every other time this didn't work so what i did was using a metal thread and pull it from the top hole to the bottom but the bottom hole in the wood is super tiny so usually you cannot catch it so the easy way is if you do it from the bottom to the top now let's go ahead you want this metal thread to go to the top and then mark the point where you want to stick this little bottoms you can go to a bottom store and ask them to make them in the same material of your couch that's what i did and then you are gonna stitch them exactly exactly where your metal thread came out from then you're gonna make it look like a little hook tie your thread that is not a normal thread it's a super super thick thread on your metal and then start pulling it from the bottom it is actually very important that you pull the thread as tight as possible so that the bottom on the top of the couch is going to be inside the foam because that's the chesterfield effect we're going to do exactly the same thing also on the second side there's four holes per couch as you see i'm going inside with the needle putting the thread on the metal thread pulling it from the bottom and we have the same exact effect we're going to do this four times now how does this super dope couch work it's made with little hooks so an important part of this is making the metal holes in which the hooks and the rope is going to pass inside this is the mechanism it's super easy you just bang your hammer on top of it and it creates the hole second round you add the metal thingies and you hammer them again and there it is magic magic it works as super pretty and aesthetical hole inside of which we're gonna pass our ropes the placing is exactly at the same height of the buttons that we place now let's go ahead with the hooks and the thread the rope actually first we pass the rope inside and we want to check that it's the right amount of rope before we cut it we're gonna make a little hook on the top tie the hooks you see it's super resistant do it again on the other side and there it is it's catched let's pass on and do it on every single side so it's eight per couch because it's four corners every corner has two and that is eight Ooh la la look who's coming out now our best friend the staple gun super important is that before you start stapling randomly around violently like i'm doing is that the first two staples are the one on the line of the bottoms because that's where we want the material to go inside do you remember that we made a cut there so that the material would go more inside that's what we're doing let move to flip it around and again we go follow with your hand push it inside and staple pulling as much as possible then all over and again on the height of the bottom you have to staple harder what happens on the corner is that you find yourself with tons of material so basically here you have to be very creative and very patient in order to fold it and staple fold it and staple so that it comes more elegantly as possible but still ruched on the side we're gonna cut all the ugly side under the couch and then we staple more because we do not want to do this couch again because it took forever forever yes you're gonna be exhausted but you have to keep going oh my god i wish all the couch was that easy we did the same thing but with the dimension of 60. Ooh, baby it's time to make the pillows the pillows what we're gonna do is make them 30 centimeter deep and we do it three times exactly in the same way of before we're gonna use the glue but wait a minute i'm not gonna get on top of it just put some heavy weight the food of your dog is good enough wait a few seconds and do it again the back pillow is 30 centimeters of depth and long exactly as the couch that is 90. now this is what i learned in the process you have to spend more time doing the curves of the couches more rounded you don't want to do just one cut but way more cut go ahead and shape it literally shape the foam yep yep like this one the 
only thing left to do is the side pillows. So where we put our arm. This ones instead are only 20 centimeters high. But guys, we saw this process too many times. So let's just show you the result. The size is 20 centimeters high, so only two times you add the foam one on top of the other. I'm coming closer to show you. And instead, the length is 60. So basically, the 30 of the depth of the back pillow plus the missing part. First idea was to just put some fabric on top, but then I understood, no, lazy girl, no. The original one has two cuts on the top. So we're gonna have to use a rope and tie it very tight after that we made the cuts on the 30-30, like always and use the rope to make the knots exactly on where we made the line so that the shape is gonna stay the same. Also, unluckily for us, the material also has sewings. So what I did here was to make three shapes of the top covering, then always put the material on the pretty material, staple them together, and this is the result. What we're gonna do now is get our sushi and go and wrap it. We place it on top of the material, same lines on the same lines, make them match on both sides, and then get our trusty pins after we stayed it a bit better, and go and pin them to corners together so that after we can sew them. But before taking it out, we're gonna make also here the holes where another rope is gonna pass through. I don't show you the process, but I just made a hole. And then you are gonna pass it inside exactly when you try to fit in tight your tight jeans. Corners over here are again the tricky part where you're just gonna have to design it as elegantly as you can and then whoosh, we hide all the ugliness inside this sewing and then by hand we are gonna go and close everything. Now guys, I know you don't believe me and I don't believe myself also, but we finished the coat! All we have to do is put the legs. I choose five instead of four because I didn't want the wood to break for no reason. Put something anti-slippery so that they would not open. Fasten the seatbelt of the couch and it's done! I just needed to go around and jump on the couch and make myself super comfortable to test how soft it is. So 90% of my following is girls and I thought I would have to implement a little bit more mirrors in this episode. The most legendary mirror that I have ever done is the Ultra Fragola. It went absolutely viral after the Gigi Hadiji started to shoot her selfies all over the internet. And all of a sudden, all Instagram had this mirror. But it cost $20,000. So we're gonna tackle you with that. Guys, this is definitely gonna be the craziest IKEA hack video you have ever seen. This is Nisedal from IKEA, and that's basically the entire base that we're gonna use to build up the mirror. Okay, what did we buy? It's a really thin molding foam and a thicker one. This is like 10 centimeter. This is just gonna be the external frame that we put at the end of the entire project, so let's keep it aside. Well, these ones are gonna be the base, so like a cage for the mirror that we're gonna stick inside. First step is to measure your molding foam and figure out what is the perfect center so that you're gonna place the mirror on top and it has to be centered from the sides, from the top and the bottom. Once you did this, I had 17 centimeters on each side and you go and draw the entire frame of the mirror, cut out this little piece that is extra. Yeah, you cannot buy a molding foam that is huge. So I just attached three pieces together and now you're gonna have to go and draw the lines that you need to make the curves. It's all a curvy mirror on the side. I had basically 4.25 centimeters left to make three lines that are gonna turn up into three steps. Yeah, basically you go lower and lower every time. You do it on both sides, on the top, that is gonna basically cross with the side lines, but you do not do it on the bottom because that side you want it thicker so that it balances all your mirror on the floor. This is literally the most important part of this tutorial. Every curve that you do, you cannot do it towards the inside. Otherwise, it's gonna end up, end up outside. What you wanna do is the curve pointing outside and ending on the line that you drew, not passing after it to come out. That's how it works. You can see it now on the left side, every time I did a curve, went inside, touched the line, and went back up. You are gonna do the same identical thing on the right and on the left side, and I'm using here the meter because I wanna make sure that all my lines match the right and the left side and that the curves happens at the same height. Exactly. Then you do it for all three times because it's three steps that we're gonna have to go and cut inside, and that's all you need. So pretty. You can totally see it already. 
I basically have the opposite of the trust issues and I always believe that this poor precision knife is gonna make all his work but I figured out it would be a lot easier. Attempt number one was with a bread knife and that's a no. You end up just stabbing the foam. The steak knife is the answer. Test the mirror inside the foam. Pass! Hooray! Now we pass to the boring side where we're gonna have to go and cut out the foam in three different um, height. First of all, you take the external curve and cut completely out the foam till the bottom. Once you did the most external curve, you're gonna go and cut the curves inside as a cake. This means you go inside uh, about three centimeters and a half and then cut out the step. And the same thing, then at the second step, you're gonna do three and a half, three and a half, so like at seven, and you cut it again away. So at the end, you have three curves, all at different heights. Guys, this is gonna be long. So just put on your favorite series. I was watching The Bold Type. I actually recommend it. It's funny, and you don't have to focus so much, so you can make your piece of art while looking at it. Yep, yep, there is more foam cutting. <laughs> You're gonna have to place your precision knife in diagonal and go and cut it all around and round it. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna pass at the end with a miracle instrument that's gonna make it smoother, but it's gonna take out this scrubbing block. It's amazing. It doesn't work like the paper, it's a block and it makes everything so much rounder and smoother. I thought it just changed the entire texture. Now that you have everything done, you just have to glue the three parts together. You can use a Mod Podge, you can use wood glue, any sort of liquid glue basically is gonna work. I'm gonna place a little piece of tape on top just to be sure that it's drying in the correct position, but we're gonna take it out once it's dry. Once you did this on all three the angles, what's left to do is make this little hole on the bottom of your mirror. That's where all your electric cables are gonna pass through, so it's important. Time to add the last layer. I just placed it under my structure just to follow the same curves that I had drawn before because I would never have been able to guess them otherwise. So you follow the same draw, ing, drawing, <laughs> and do all the curves towards the inside. Yes, it's the first time that we do internal curves and that's because we're going to cover the frame of our mirror with these curves. Once you did all of it, you just go with your precision knife, cut it out, we're gonna smooth it later. You just wanna take it out completely, you see, and now place it on top of your structure. Tape it just to keep it in place and now we do the external curves. Yes, we're almost there. You make the curves, you can already see it, the mirror's inside and you can see the frame, this works perfectly. Go and cut out also the outside of the drawing. Now you can have the frame also of the outside. Then again with the precision knife in diagonal to make it smooth on the outside. We're gonna have to do it also in the internal curves. Sand it around the edges, glue it on the top and we are done. One day later and we are finally at the moment of truth. Can you see it? It's absolutely awesome. Obviously, some of the connections are not perfectly smooth, as we can see here. But now that they are connected, I'm just gonna go and clean them out and make the cut perfect. Like, this one is a bit ugly. And after that, we're gonna do the top layer that is gonna cover the mirror. First step is the one to make some shaky, 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 shaky of our polystyrol. After that, we're gonna have to create pink because there was not in the store. And I just mixed white and red together, and that's the pink. Once you mix it, you just need literally a drop of color is gonna be enough to cover your entire polyester. The precise quantities are 100 grams of polyester for two grams of hardener. But uh, yeah, I got bored in the process and I just decided that it's one glass of polyester for two drops of hardener and a drop of the color and that's enough. Now you go ahead and cover your entire frame. Do, 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 do. And that's how it's gonna look a few hours later. For the second layer, I did exactly like before, the same amount of polyester and passed it over, but I realized I would need so much time and effort and material to fill up all the little holes. So I took out the silicone. This trick is amazing to fill up all your holes and then to make it smooth, you just make the trick of the soap. Dip your finger in the soap, pass it on top of the silicone and it's gonna become super duper smooth. Guys, as much silicone you add, more it's gonna become smooth. It's all about your choice. I did the same thing also on the back because this stayed white and that was my last step. You go and insert the lead inside the hole that we previously made, leaving the cables on the back of the mirror and the rest of the light on the front. Then we add a lot of silicone to go and stick our mirror inside and it fits. And this was the sad moment where I realized I forgot to 
paint the frame. Exactly, the frame of the mirror is visible if you look from the sides, so it was important to go ahead with a little spray paint and cover it up the same color of the rest of our structure. Take off the protection that I put on the window, no, it's a mirror, on the mirror to protect it, and finally, we are ready to stick the LED light. Go and stick it on the most external section that you can so that it will stay hidden inside the structure that we built before, and if it's too long, you just go ahead and cut it where it's drawn a little pair of scissors. chair it is literally this one you see her naked over here because I was in the process of changing her color but it's absolutely one of the most incredible chairs in the world it's so comfortable like me and my fat belly are so comfortable in this right now it required me an incredible amount of math to figure this out but don't worry I'm gonna give you the details of that in the video so let's go to the etc chair so here we go our beginning of the tutorial is literally gonna be taking out a bunch of papers. If you have a huge one, buy a huge one, but if you are stingy like me, just get paper, some paper tape, and we're gonna draw the shape that we need to cut on the wood. There was basically zero information about the measurements of this chair online, and all I could find was this drawing over here. That is absolutely not enough. So what I did was drawing the first initial dimensions that I have, stick together all the papers in order to make the amount of the length and the height that we need and then all the rest I had to calculate it directly from the drawing itself. So here you go, stick them all together till you have a piece of paper that is big enough to make your entire drawing and then go and mark down the only three measurements that we have, the height and the depth and the length of your chair. So here we go, drawing down all the lines that we found out. The height we know is 39 and then the first curve happens at 45 centimeters, the second one at 27, the third one at 27. So finally I know that at 45 centimeter I will have to go down where your body is gonna sit and that is gonna be at 19 centimeters of height. Again you go up to 39 and then back all the way to the floor to make the back of your chair. I actually believe that the original chair is a little bit thinner than this but I was so scared that the chair was gonna break that I decided to add one two centimeter extra nobody's gonna notice that it's gonna make me feel so much safer. I traced the entire tape up around and once I did that I colored the inside made rounds around the ends of the wood and cut out everything. There we go we cut it completely out and sticked it keeping the angles as precise as possible. And then we're gonna mark it on the wood and cut away the same identical shape. We're gonna have to do this six times, so I'm gonna repeat the same process. Six times, I'm gonna show you one, because it's boring. <laughs> Let's do it together. Super duper easy step. We're just gonna trace everything on the wood and then take out our jigsaw after we away the little paper and pass it on all the lines that we did. It's important that you place the wood far away from the leg of your table otherwise it's gonna be super hard to cut it and you're gonna create a disaster. You see this angle over here is away from the leg and that's why I was able to go with the jigsaw inside and cut out all the little crazy edges that we have over here. You do it once and then you're gonna have to repeat it four times I did it, not six. A professional will tell you to take out your clumps and to stick the two woods together to dry, but we all know that I don't like to spend money on not existential equipment, so just put something heavy on top and fit it with tons of glue. I decided to start just making the holes in the corners of the wood and only after doing that I would take out a little bit of the wood that I decided would be the size and go and measure and place it in the distance in between the two corners of the wood. It was super important for me that the end ones would be on the corners and that's why I prioritized those ones and then did the ones inside. You have to make the size that is 60 centimeters perfectly to place your butt inside and that's gonna be the depth of your chair. But we already did the sides of the chair which is four centimeters per side so it's not gonna be 60, it's gonna be 60 minus four minus four, it's 52. So you're gonna have to cut tons of woods of 52 centimeters to go and fill up your entire chair. So what we made is tons of little woods that are gonna be like, you know the beds that have those lines of wood in the middle where you place your mattress on top? That's the same technology that we're using. I got tons of these ones that are like rectangulars, but I thought that it wouldn't be so comfortable on the corners where you have to place your legs, your back, your shoulders, and so I decided that on 
these pots over here, I would instead place round ones. So I bought dowels instead of straight lines, and those are the ones that I'm gonna place in between the rounded edges of this chair. Yeah, I think that's gonna make it so much more comfortable. Now, what we have to do is make the holes in which to pass our screws. No, no, no! You cannot place directly the screw inside, otherwise your wood is gonna pop, and that's why you have to make these holes over here on both sides of the wood, both on the dowels and on the squared um, wood, and then you have to place them all in between your chair. I decided to place first all the round ones because they were the corners, and they would help me to keep the chair standing up and to finish my work more clean and more tidy and actually see what the heck I was doing while screwing them together. Once I did this, the chair was already in shape. I asked my friend to come and help me to put them on in because it was a very long work, but I was so excited and it just continued and I can't believe that it's turning out so good. Yeah, a little dance is always welcome when you're excited, you know, and then you just go ahead and keep screwing them in. Even if your phone rings 200 times and you have to keep doing it while you have a phone inside your ear. I'm sitting on it and it's holding me and it's not breaking and it's freaking comfortable. I'm shocked about the comfort of this chair and I'm just gonna go on and on and blast about how happy I am of the result. I guess I'm gonna keep this theory for the rest of my life and use it every time I can. I'm not gonna cut the fabric anymore if I can do one side at a time. This way you know that you're not gonna make any mistake. So what I did was cutting out the extreme edges because it was too much foam to put inside there and then just staple it inside. Every time you reach a corner you make a little cut and you push the V inside. Both if it's a corner to the inside and the outside. You see? Cut it out push it in, clip it inside, and you are done. On the other side, at this point, you can cut out the extra amount of foam or material and then go ahead and staple it again. When you have a corner that goes to the outside, you're gonna find yourself with a little bit of emptiness on the wood compared to the foam, and that's why I had to cut some teeny tiny triangulars to fill up the missing spots of foam. You go ahead, this took around 40 minutes, and you're done. So here we are measuring again the couch, the top was again 60 centimeters and the side was four. What I did was calculating how much material I would have to cut together. At the end it was uh, 68 for the top and 68 for the bottom. I did a mistake and did one of 66, so you're gonna see at the end that I have one of 66 and one of 70, so to get back those centimeters that I forgot to cut, but you can do it identically top and bottom. We're gonna stay, pin them, not staple them, pin them all together, the top and the bottom, and in the middle we're gonna put a zipper. Now it's time to pin also this super long amount of material and zip together and then we're gonna have to sew everything together in one line. It should be a very easy sewing, it's all straight. So I close the bottom side like this and now we're gonna flip it around and just pull it through the entire chair. 